I know why you clicked on this video. You wanted to know how I got my skin to look like this in under a year, and I am here to tell you how. Hi friends, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hunter Brene and I am a country bumpkin residing in the beautiful Seoul, South Korea. So I don't have on any makeup today besides a lip tint and I put my eyebrow gel on. Anyways, I come to you pretty much barefaced because we're gonna talk about skincare. One of the main problems I wanted to address when I finally got settled in Korea was my skin. I desperately needed to get pimples extracted. I needed to see a dermatologist so that they could examine my skin and tell me what I was doing wrong. And lastly, I needed to know the ways to maintain my skin so that all the hard work that I was doing at one point was not in vain. A brief rundown about my skin. I have acne prone combination skin. I get really oily in my T-zone and I am also prone to dry patches on my skin. I was told that I have like a slight version of eczema that will pop up when I'm under a lot of stress and when the weather changes and things like that. But overall, I'm an extremely oily person. <laughs> As soon as I hit puberty, I started breaking out. Most of my breakouts were on my body, but I still got really difficult to manage cystic acne, particularly on my chin and on my cheek areas and sometimes on my forehead. Probably since I was 14 years old, I hid all of my acne and acne scars under makeup. And to, to say the least, it really crippled my self-esteem for most of my adolescence and early 20s. I finally saw a dermatologist in my mid-20s to address my slight eczema that was flaring up and burning my skin. And during that same visit, I addressed my acne. They were able to steer me in the direction of some products, but every month I felt like I was starting back over. I would finally clear up one spot and I started to address the dark spot and then my period hits and then another acne mark or two or three or four pop up. So jump to now, uh, moving to South Korea, like I said, the main thing that I wanted to tackle as soon as I got settled was my skin. You saw the picture. By, by this point, I had active acne, I had cystic acne, I had the small little bumps that you get on the perimeter of your face from like product buildup, all of these things, plus the hyperpigmentation. That was my biggest foe. Oh my gosh. So August of last year, finally got fed up, went on the internet, was searching for skincare clinics in Seoul that were decently priced, but also had a lot of good reviews. I settled on Poon, which I went to the Mapo branch, so near Hongdae exit nine, I believe. Yes, Hongdae exit nine. I spoke with the esthetician at Poon to tell them all of my problem areas and what I wanted to address. And they recommended to me peeling procedures. So I believe I went through a number of aqua peels as as well as CO2 lasers and the intense pulse light laser, so IPL laser. Alongside the peeling and laser treatments, I got rehydration treatments. So they used a mixture of like hyaluronic acid, green tea, niacinamide, um, different products like that that they put into masks or cooling treatments on my face to, to appease and cool the acne and my skin because it was inflamed. And of course, we did the extraction. So every visit that I went, they would extract my active acne that was ready to come out. I guess. So why did I opt to get treatments at a skincare clinic? Well, one, I knew that my problem areas, it wasn't something that I could handle on my own. I've been trying to solve my own acne for years and it wasn't effective. So I finally decided to let a professional do their thing. Korea is known for skincare clinics. So I felt completely comfortable going to a clinic here, telling them what I needed and them finding the solution to make it better, which I will say they, they did their thing. The skincare package that I signed up for was an eight week package plan. They alternated between the different peeling solutions, the different hydration solutions. When I finally finished the treatments, I saw tremendous difference. Um, I don't think I have any images of that. It was like night and day. My skin was a lot more clear. Of course, I still had the dark spots from previous acne scars, but the active acne was finally subdued. I really felt like I had finally got a win in this active war between me and acne. At that moment, the esthetician offered me a hyperpigmentation package which I opted out because I knew that I could tackle the hyperpigmentation using skincare. Also, just to be transparent, it was very expensive. I had already dropped around a million won, so close to 825 USD on the skincare package alone, which yes, that's a very steep cost, but for the procedures that they performed 
informed on me and also for the amount of time that I got these procedures for, the price was nothing compared to what I would have to pay back in the States. But I was not willing to pay that plus another 200,000 won to get rid of the dark spots. So I thought in that moment, okay, I can do it myself. So now that you know the brief history about my skin and my skin journey leading up to this point, I would love to tell you about what products I'm currently using, what steps I'm taking to continue to clear my skin, and then also some little tips and tricks that maybe you haven't thought about that could be the reason why you're also suffering with acne. For this video, I wanted to be like the skincare girlies and I filmed some B-roll of me doing both my daytime routine as well as my nighttime routine. So in the morning, when I wake up looking crusty and dusty, I always start off with a cleanser. My current favorite morning cleanser is the low pH Good Morning Gel Cleanser by Kazarex. Kazarex is absolutely one of the best Korean skincare brands that I have stumbled upon here. It is both cost efficient and also absolutely effective. This cleanser offers a really gentle morning cleanse, nothing too abrasive, nothing too rough because in the morning it's just whatever oils that I have that didn't seep into my skin from my night care routine. So I don't need anything too impactful in the morning, just something cool. After I cleanse my face, I then use the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. This is absolutely a holy grail for me. This product has salicylic acid in it, which is one of the main products that the dermatologist told me to incorporate into my skincare. It's the whole conversation of AHA, BHA, PHA, including those into your skincare as much as possible or as much as your skin can handle. So this is my first exfoliant that I use and I use this every morning after I cleanse my face. Following Paula's choice, I like to up the ante of the BHA by pairing it with alpha arbutin 2% plus the hyaluronic acid serum from The Ordinary. The Ordinary is also an amazing brand that I highly recommend if you haven't tried their products. I love the glass containers. I love that you can get them in different sizes. Following Alpha Arbutin, I use a vitamin C serum. So this one is from Goodall. It is the Vita C Dark Spot Care Serum. I've done a lot of skincare research and they encourage pairing actives, so like BHA, PHA, AHAs with Alpha Arbutin, which kind of lifts them up, enhances them. It's like putting the NO2 into the car and it just speeds up. And then you pair that with a vitamin C. This is a very powerful trio. Also three of these together are targeting dark spots. They're evening your skin tone. They're giving you that clear skin, getting rid of any physical bumps or things that you may have on your skin. Yeah, I love them so much. After wrapping up my morning routine with these three products after cleansing, I of course use an SPF. So this is the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel and it has SPF 50. Love this stuff swear by it. I really like this product. Very light, very airy, absolutely a bonus for the summer months. I will say I'm not very picky when it comes to sun creams, so I typically go for whatever I can find that's 50 plus, but I believe I'll repurchase this from Coupon when I finally run out. That's really it for my morning routine. I keep it very simple. My evening routine is where I get a little no, a little frisky. I have to change it up depending on what issue I'm tackling at that time. So let's talk about it. I am a makeup lover. I wear makeup on a daily basis. So I do a double cleanse starting with the Oat Cleanser Balm from the Inky List. This is a really great option. Um, there are many other cleansing balms that are on the market. I don't think that I've ever run into a cleansing balm that I didn't like. What I favor about this one is that it comes just in the squeezy tube versus some of the other ones that come in jars where you have to scoop out the product and it gets really messy. But I'm not partial to this. I It's a good product. I like it. Following my cleansing balm, I then go into my cleanser. So this is, don't get me lying about how to pronounce this brand. What is your name? Mm. Okay. Not me showing off my Korean. Mm. <laughs> it is the pure and deep cleansing foam. Looks like this. The only con to this foam cleanser is it's very foamy. Like, as soon as I add water to activate the cleansing properties, this thing goes everywhere. So that makes for a very fun nighttime routine, but then also a very messy because it always gets into my eyes and it always burns. And then I always have just, it, it's everywhere. It, it's really everywhere. <laughs> but nevertheless, love the product, recommend it. And it's very cost effective at Olive Young. This is where my routine really differs um, depending on what 
things I am tackling for the night. I break it up into three different routine options. First things first, of course, my cleanser, my cleansing balm. I start with those every single night and I follow those up with a toner. So I have two toner options, totally depending on how my skin is feeling. If I have some active acne or if I have texture, if I have parts of my skin that just feel really inflamed and angry from the day, I go in with the Dear Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. I love this toner. I've been using this since before I came to Korea. It has no scent or fragrance, so it's amazing for sensitive skin, especially acne prone skin. So yes, this toner is great. The second option that I also love is from the brand Kazarex. Mm, Kazarex and this is the Propolis Synergy Toner. Their whole Propolis line, I swear by. I use every product from the line. You will see me promote every product in a little bit. The remainder of my three skincare nighttime options are not contingent upon the toners because both toners are very sensitive skin friendly. They go well with any mix of the products that I'm about to mention. So if you're looking for a good all around quality toner, I recommend both of those options. So you, you won't go wrong. Um, my first night care routine, I do this two nights out of the week and I start of course with my toner and then I go in with the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion from The Ordinary. Amazing brand. I've talked about them already. I swear by this product. I will say they have different levels to this formula. They have the 2% and I think it goes a little bit lower and also goes higher. I don't recommend going too high, especially if it's your first time using a retinol. I made that mistake and it totally destroyed my skin for about two weeks and I had to nurse it back to health. Not fun, not fun at all. So I recommend 2% or lower and I also recommend starting off maybe using it for one day. Following the retinoid, I go in with the Neosinamide 10% plus Zinc 1% solution. These two put together tackles, I think it's textured skin as well as hyperpigmentation, aging, wrinkles, different things like that. My second night care routine is on two separate nights of the week that are not the retinoid and it includes a physical exfoliant so i use the nine wishes rice powder polish and this is a micro ground rice powder so this product actually it looks very interesting i don't know how you would describe this this is like a grainy cream it's not too abrasive but it's just abrasive enough for when i have just a lot of leftover gunk on my face if you have active acne don't use this and also if you have active acne don't use this. Use the third option, which is Centella Blemish Cream. So when I have active pimples on my face, particularly around that time of the month, I put this cream on top of them and then I will put a pimple patch to cover that up. And this is, of course, by the brand Cosrx. <laughs> After I've sealed the acne spot with the pimple patch, I then go in with the Propolis Light Ample. This is very empty. I go in with this very thick serum across my entire face to really seal in the moisture and capping that off with the also very empty Propolis Light Cream. Usually if I'm using the toner, I will finish that with the serum and then the cream just to you know, keep it all in the family. On the other nights when I'm using the retinol or I'm using the physical exfoliant, I will use the Hyaluronic Acid Intensive Cream by Kazarex. This is a really thick formula. Like I've never had a cream that was this thick. For the summer, it was not enjoyable, but it was necessary because I needed to lock in the moisture. So I highly recommend that you check these brands out. I will leave the websites for all of them down below. I will also leave the links to the products as well that I currently have and I currently love. So I have four quick skincare tips and tricks to share with you all. Number one is steaming your skin. When I back in America, I invested in a portable steamer that I use to open up my facial skin so that my products would work a lot faster and a lot more effectively. I'll say now being in Korea, I don't have the counter space or the means to really invest in that. So I just use the shower. The shower is a great way to, you know, wash your body. And then when you get done with that, do your skincare so that it really gets in there and it's able to work at its highest potential. My second tip for getting your skin right is using an SPF. As a chocolate woman, most of my life, I did not think that we had to use SPF. I always thought we were immune 
immune to the sun's advances. In fact, we are not. No matter your complexion, no matter your ethnic background, no matter any of that, you should be wearing an SPF. The worst feeling is you're investing in your skincare and then you go outside and all of your hard work is for nothing because that sun is just gonna hit those spots and it's gonna continue to darken them unless you put a barrier between yourself and the sun. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting an SPF. The level of protection, I'm not up to date on that. I just try to go for whatever top number I can get, but at a decent price. So 50, 40 to 50 is usually where I, I stick around. For tip number three, make sure that you are washing the things that interact with your face in particular. This was one of the most impactful things that the dermatologist told me. I had gone a long time without washing my pillowcases. I didn't think about the dirt that is transferred between my face and my pillow. I'm just getting more and more of my old dirt onto my face. I can without a doubt confirm that if you have problem areas, particularly on your chin, on your jawline, on your forehead, that it is because of dirty surfaces that your skin is having contact with. And the very last tip is stop touching your face. Just think about the different things that you touch and all of those things have dirt all over them. So imagine you're touching something and then you touch your face. That dirt transfer is one of the biggest causes of acne on your face, on your body, anywhere. I've always had this really nervous habit where I will touch my chin or I'll put my hand over my mouth or I'll put my hand on my forehead when I'm stressed. And those are some of the main reasons why I had a lot of acne, particularly around the perimeter. When I think about touching my face, I just put my hands together and I'll bring my hands down. Of course, sometimes you'll slip, you'll touch your face. If you can lessen that more and more and more, your face condition is gonna improve so much. So then the skincare that you use can actually be useful. So friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to say one more time, my skin is not perfect. My skin is not where I absolutely want it to be, but I've made a lot of progress and I'm really happy with where I am right now. If you're someone that's at a point in any part of this journey that I've been, I hope that you can feel encouraged and empowered that whatever you're going through, you can get through it. I know skincare and dermatology visits, visiting estheticians, it can be very expensive. And the tough part about insurance is it's not usually covered in insurance, even though it affects us mentally and emotionally and psychologically. If and when you can save money or when you have the means to invest in your skin, I recommend it. And I am encouraging you, I'm fighting in your corner, and I hope that you can get to the point where you can be happy with the skin that you have so yeah my little auntie moment thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you all have an amazing day night evening whatever time it is where you are i'll see you next time